All right, thank you, Shannon. Uh, this is Jose Gonzalez. It's the 26th of September, our finance committee meeting. And we have actually everybody in attendance, including our alternate, Councilor Ninda. <laughs> and so more than happy to have you. Just can't vote today. But thank you for being there uh, to back us up. I'm perfectly fine without voting. <laughs> well, we have a jam-packed agenda. We do. You know, so this will be an easy one. So let's, I'm going to call the meeting to order. And would the other members like to introduce themselves? Councilor Stapleton, Ward 1. Councilor Barney, Ward 8. Councilor Nordyke, Ward 7. And my, I'm Jose Gonzalez, Councilor Ward 8. And that completes item agenda one. Number two is the approval of the minutes. So I would accept the motion from um, somebody. I move approval of the minutes. Second. Okay, first by Stapleton, second by Varney. Any discussions? If not, I guess I take this for a vote. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay, that completes. Uh, Approval of the minutes, uh, public comment. Josh, anybody signed up for public comment? Uh, no, there's no one signed up today. How about any action items for us other than what's on the agenda? Uh, no, not this evening. Okay. Then we're going to move right on to agenda number five, management update information report. So I hand it over to you, Josh. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Josh Eggleston, Chief Financial Officer. I just have a couple slides. Uh, it's been a while since we've been together, so I wanted to put something together just to orient uh, everyone on our investments. Uh, this is uh, fiscal year 2022 fourth quarter. Um, you'll, we'll be getting another one here toward the end of September, and we'll hopefully have that for you at your October meeting. Uh, just real quick, you might um, be interested, the U.S. Treasury yield. Um, this is something we produced a while back, and it's been a while since we got together. Um, so our investments are through the end of June, uh, which uh, is the green line. Um, but just given how fast our economy changes, I included uh, the, the last three months also. Um, if you're familiar with the, the yield curve, the appropriate um, a rational way is kind of going up, uh, but you can see we do have some inversion, uh, which all that means is that the, there's less economic, um, the outlook is less good in the short term. So people are trying to buy future, uh, future um, treasury bonds and the 10 year, 30 year bond. So there's more, more demand for those, the rate goes down and the rate's higher for the shorter term. Um, this doesn't mean we're going into a recession. It's just one indicator um, that we make sure we follow. Any questions on this? Um, if you had a chance to look at your quarterly report, this is kind of the high level, um, the total market value, $381 million. Um, and uh, if you're not familiar, if you haven't seen this before, on the left are funds that are managed by city staff. And on the right are funds that are managed by our financial advisor, uh, PFM. Um, we have the geo bond portfolios, <clears throat> which is for the library, police facility, and uh, the water sewer bonds, the revenue bonds, uh, and then the short-term and long-term portfolio. And then on our side, the managed by US staff, we have money that's in the bank, and then the LGIP, the local government investment pool. Uh, and those are our liquid funds that we use on an operating basis to make payroll and pay all the other bills that we have. And this is just to show our compliance with our investment policy. I'll talk a little bit about the updated policy in a second, but just with the um, percent of portfolio allowed by policy in each category or well within the limits there. Uh, the one thing we'll bring uh, for you next time with our next quarterly update is the uh, ESG portion of the, the new investment policy, the environment, uh, sustainability and governance uh, portion that was added. And we're looking at portions of our investments that we 
might divest early in order to be compl in compliance with that portfolio. We do have some fossil fuel investments and some others uh, that might not meet those, those guidelines. We'll bring that back for you uh, next time. But right now we're in compliance with the, the current policy. We just haven't quite implemented the ESG portion yet. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions on that, the ESG part? Anybody, especially the newer members? Oh, Linda, Linda, go ahead. Okay. This one, this meeting requires um, you to unmute yourself. It's not every meeting, but. So um, I don't have any questions, Josh, in particular to what you presented. What I didn't see is I don't see where I would have seen these documents so that I could have reviewed them. Um, can you tell me where I would find them or if they come to me separate? Sure. So the agenda, including this, uh, the quarterly investment report was included on the calendar appointment. Um, so if you look at the calendar appointment, it'll be attached there. It's also on our website. So if you go to the finance committee page, uh, you can see the agenda and minutes and all the materials there. Okay. So I just need to find the finance page. That's where I was. That's what I was looking for. So and, uh, thank you. We'll, we'll send you a link so you can just have it and you can bookmark it too. That would be helpful. <laughs> And another another tip, another tip, Linda, because I, I get stuck is this since this is a city council, this is a council committee. It's under city council finance committee. So it wouldn't just be called the finance finance committee. OK, city council finance committee. OK, great. Thanks very much. And Josh, I guess the only other question I, I mean, the only question I had is, you know, as we you know, um, one one side of us is listening to what's on the news, what people are talking about. Um, and, you know, usually government funding is a couple years behind, but I'm sure there's some things that might be affecting us on the, on the, on the front end, inflation wise, anything we should be aware of um, that you think is important? Yeah, good, good question. You know, uh, inflation hits us just like it does anyone else when we're buying goods and services, uh, you know, especially on the construction side, we've seen bids come in much higher than expected. Um, and then also just for just general materials and supplies. Uh, things like that, they come in higher. Uh, at your future meeting, I think it'll be October, we'll bring back a set of assumptions we're planning to use in our five-year financial forecast uh, for things like fuel, uh, kind of a general escalator um, for just general materials and services, as well as uh, like benefit rates and things like that. Uh, just for your review, um, we tend to be a little more conservative. Um, we try to be just to make sure we have have coverage there, but inflation, um, it's one where I think in our last forecast, we used uh, cascading, you know, 3%, you know, going down to, you know, a more comfortable 2%. Um, and, you know, clearly we've been higher than, higher than 3%. So something we're looking at. Uh, the other thing I'd note, um, if you follow the PERS board at all, they uh, publish their rates at their meeting, they actually are holding uh, this Friday, um, but the packet came out. So the, the rates, thank you for the 2021 investment returns. Uh, they came in a little bit lower than we forecasted. So a little bit of good news there. Um, the only downside is our investment returns on the PERS side haven't been that great this year. So I expect higher rates uh, for the next biennium when we get there in, in three or four years. Hey, hey Josh. Yes. This is Keith. Could you just give them an idea of what that means to us in, in real dollars? And sure, I don't have that with me, but my recollection is, you know, a couple percent on the on the general fund. It's uh, you know, it's more than a million dollars, you know, between one and two million dollars for the for the PERS rate. So it's very impactful uh, across all city funds. Um, the one caution I would have is that. You know, yes, it's savings for today, um, but what it means is those uh, those nice investment returns are offset with poor investment returns now. So we're we're going to get back to the rate we thought we would. Uh, we just have a couple year uh, break before we get there. Any other questions for Josh? Okay. Okay. How about continued business? Any continued business, Josh? I didn't see any. Uh, no, we don't have any continued business uh, for discussion today, unless someone, unless there's a member that has any. Yeah, or any new business from any member of the count of the meet of the committee. Yes, Vanessa. Uh, thank you, Chair Gonzalez. So I am 
really excited about our bond measure, but I'm already thinking about what we do next to revenue. And one of the ideas that I brought up before at a council meeting and has to do with a public safety levy down the road. The police and fire take up the lion's share of our general fund. And that leaves scraps for the rest of the city, our parks, our code compliance officers, our libraries, and critically, our homelessness related services. Now, if we had a public safety levy that passed, we could have one tailored to address specifically public safety services, for example, police, fire, ambulance, and mobile crisis. One of the things we'll be talking about later today, so which I can't discuss in detail now. But a public safety levy would answer a lot of the questions that we keep getting every single year. For my new counselors, the budgetary year, the budgetary cycle will feel like Groundhog, Dog, Groundhog Day to you. And you'll see that time and time every year, the lion's share goes to our public safety services, which makes sense. But if we have a levy that capitalizes on, uh, that actually finances a lot of that, that would relieve a lot of the pressure that we have on addressing homelessness, which is not going away anytime soon. And having that sort of ongoing sustainable influx of revenue once we pass a levy, I think would make the budgetary process a lot less stressful for our staff, especially because every year they have to kind of come up with a brilliant way to keep us moving forward and keep us in the black. And it's a lot less stressful for us. Uh, the property tax dollars are not enough for us to sustain our current service levels. So obviously one thing for one thing at a time, we have to focus on the bond and the bonds passage. But after that, this committee is tasked with identifying potential sources of revenue. And I think that's something that we could do that would serve a lot of purposes. It would address the public safety services that we need and it would also make our, it would give our budget a lot more options for using the general fund for the kind of discretionary things that we want to do. Do we want to buy a hotel for sheltering purposes? Do we want to give support towards another project, turnkey project for uh, another nonprofit who wants to open one? I mean, general funds could, could be retained for their discretionary value and not be overwhelmingly used for public safety services. So it's something I'd like to float to the board, to the committee, excuse me now, knowing that we're not gonna take action on that today, but I wanna introduce you folks to that concept now and get your thoughts on it. Thank you, Member Nordek. Any comments or questions? I do, Chair, if it's okay. Oh. Oh yeah, okay. Member Stapleton, if you want to go first and then Member Varney, yeah. Sure. Um, so um, as Councillor Nordak has talked about, um, just this kind of looming budget issue that we know we've been faced with um, for several years um, and that the previous council tried to um, and, and partially did address with the operations fee, um, but then COVID um, hit us all upside the head and uh, put a pause on all of that. Um, and I know before that, uh, they were making their decisions based on a committee, I believe, please correct me, Josh, where I'm wrong, um, but there was a committee that was formed um, and they made recommendations to the council and there were several different recommendations. Would it be appropriate for us at this point in time, looking forward to this, this next year um, or the coming months after the bond passes, um, for us to have, how would, we, how would we look at that again, right? Like, would it be um, something where staff could just take a look at those recommendations and still see if all that information is current and then send it back to us for again, another review and conversation and voting, et cetera? Or do we need to gather people again uh, in order to maybe make uh, uh, more um, adjustments to that document 
Um, I believe that levies were part of that document. Um, from what I've heard about levies, I get a little nervous because um, of how they work with bonding and how the, the relationship between property tax and all the other things involved in that. Um, I would need a refresher on how levies would impact the budget because I'm not against them at all. But I'm I from what I've heard and what the very edges of my mind um, with levies, I get kind of nervous when we start talking about them. So I would need educating on what a levy is, what it would do to our budget, what it would do to bonding, what it would do to the property tax and all of that, um, the ramifications, which I'm sure everybody here is also really interested in knowing because we have to come into this eyes wide open um, and fully informed in order to make a good decision. And so one, I would love some education too. I would love to hear um, a little bit more about the previous council's um, subcommittee or task force or whatever it is uh, who made those recommendations and how we would maybe move forward with that. Sure, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so there was uh, uh, lots of members. I, I'm thinking it was about 16 member task force. They looked at 13 revenue options. It was called the Sustainable Services Revenue Task Force, a little bit of a mouthful. Um, and they recommended uh, several options to the city council. One was the operations fee uh, that was put in place. Uh, the second was the payroll tax. Uh, and the third, not for the general fund, but just um, for the transportation fund was a gas tax. So they recommended those options. Uh, I think it's well within the purview of the finance committee to kind of take up that work and look at those uh, revenue options um, just on your own accord. And I'd be happy to, to bring that back. What I might recommend is maybe we do a couple kind of educational pieces on what they are, how they work, you know, kind of, um, not property tax 101, but just how it interacts with other things. Uh, and then after after the bond, after we finish the five-year forecast and the budget committee receives it, maybe that's when you bring back uh, more specific uh, revenue ideas with uh, actual scenarios, things like that, that you guys could look at. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Member Varney. Thank you, Chair Gonzalez. Um, I second everything that Councillor Stapleton mentioned, um, especially as a new counselor, there's a lot of information and education that I would appreciate as to where we left off a couple years ago and see how we're going to move forward. Um, I'd also like to see the uh, both the advantages and disadvantages of, of levies and bonding versus forming districts like a public safety district. Um, just look at the different options of uh, moving forward. Um, I also wanted to mention after my years on the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, we did also talk about a parks levy potentially coming up just because we need a lot of help with our parks. So I realized there are a lot of needs there and I mainly just wanted to say I'm looking forward to further conversations on what we might be able to do to address some of those needs. So thank you. People think the finance committee is boring, but no, not at all. This is where the action happens. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, yes, member Nordic. Thank you so much. So uh, I, yeah, I agree. Let's with uh, counselors, Brian Stapleton, let's get the options in front of us when the time is right. And uh, I, I think it would be a good educational piece for my, for myself as well. Um, there are lots of options. Uh, when it comes to public safety districts, when it comes to levies and so on. We know in Multnomah County, they passed uh, a bond that was specific towards building affordable housing, for example, uh, to help address the severe shortage of housing affordability up there. There's lots of different options out there. And um, I'm willing to revisit the ones that the revenue, the Sustainable Revenue Task Force came up with, which I believe they came up in 2018-ish or so. Um, I do remember uh, from being on council at the time that there was some vehement opposition to a payroll tax. So I'm willing to revisit it, but I mean, there was opposition to that before the COVID began, before the financial toll of it. So part of my interest in exploring a different option was just the 
uh, the palpable disagreement <laughs> that I noticed that people had to that. I want to, if we're going to invest in any kind of measure that we take to the voters, um, we want to make sure it's one that we think will win the day. And uh, which is why I, I like the way the bond was structured because it doesn't increase the rate of property taxes. I think that was really clever of the staff uh, to help make that ask to people um, who are perpetually skeptical of government's ability to do a darn thing. So anyway, love the discussion. Would happy happy to explore more down the road. Thank you, Member Stapleton. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to just say uh, something else that uh, Councillor Varney and I also serve on the Cable Regulatory Commission. Uh, we had a meeting uh, with Josh. Uh, was that only last week? It feels like a long time ago. <laughs> um, but we talked about a right of way and about the importance of educating, especially this group, um, about the revenue that's generated um, through our right of way. Um, and the projections, um, which are going down, our revenue is decreasing. And so um, Josh had come up with a really clever thing. He was talking about, <laughs> you're so clever, Josh, <laughs> coming up with a report about, and uh, I'm going to forget how you said it. It was eloquent when you said it, um, but just about revenue sources that we have right now that are on the decline. And did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And so, um, and bringing it to this group. And so I wanted to just kind of Put that out there on the table while we're in this public setting um, that uh, Councillor Varney and I are really concerned about this and would like um, this group and council as a whole to, to be aware of what's happening um, and be educated about what's happening so that when we uh, move forward with a new franchise agreement or whatnot, we are, again, fully educated on the decisions that we're making. So thank you for that, Josh, and I look forward to seeing that at some point. Thank you, Member Stapleton. Um, and I think basically uh, what I gather is to the staff that um, it's in, we're in a new world, right? But we also don't wanna recreate the wheel. So if there's any information, anything that's happened recently with regard to these committees or past committees, then it'd be, it'd be really nice for all of us to um, get a refresher. Yeah, of course. A couple other things if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, one other thing we're looking at doing, um, we've talked about it for a couple years, but with the new bond issuance as a being proposed, we're looking at a post issuance compliance policy uh, for council to adopt. We're hoping to bring it to this body first, just for review. Um, and then hopefully you'll recommend it to the full council. Uh, what it does is it gives um, Moody's, you know, our credit rating agency, some assurance that uh, the post issuance compliance, all the, all the timing, all the reports, they're gonna be issued on time. You know, it's continuing staff education pieces like that, um, just to have that policy in place. We don't currently have it in one spot, at least. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I mentioned is the forecast assumptions, we'll bring that back. And I think I can just uh, include that declining revenue report with that item also for the forecast assumptions, because a big piece of that is those revenue assumptions going into the future. Thank you, Josh. No, you're right. The uh, Just that policy uh, wordage statement to have to ensure that our rating is strong. I mean, just that, that, that saves us money. So thank you for being on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so, and if there's any, if there aren't any new business items from anybody, I think we can um, thank all the staff for being here. Very helpful. Oh, Keith, you had a comment? No, you just want to say, oh, he's, he was saying bye already. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. <laughs> no, hey, we're going to keep this show. Yeah, we for 30 minutes, we got it done. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to the members. Thanks. Meetings adjourned. Great meeting.